Hi there. My name is John Stevens. I'm pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Oregon City, Oregon, and we are part of the ELCA. And welcome to Dollar Store Children's Sermons, where we take a look at the lectionary text, tie them to an item from the Dollar Tree or the junk drawer or the kids' room or the garage. You know how we've been doing it. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your week with me in this way. And thank you for the love that you're sharing with your kids and your congregations and your families. You are rocking it. Thank you so much. So this is for the second Sunday of Easter. And we are looking at the gospel lesson. And yeah, we're looking at the gospel lesson. And it is the gospel lesson we get after every single Easter Sunday. It's the second Sunday in Easter, and it's when Jesus appears to the disciples in the locked room, in that upper room where they were just there days before celebrating or having the Last Supper with, with Jesus. And now they're back up there. They're back into the place that they know so well. They're back in the place where oh, it's like that's the one place they know to go. So that's where they go and they lock the doors, and it's like they're in their own tomb. Uh, they've experienced or they've heard that Jesus is alive, and it terrifies them. Just like at the end of Mark, if you preached Mark the last week, where the women run from the tomb and say nothing to anyone because they are afraid, here are the disciples that have heard some of these stories, and they are afraid as well. So they're in the upper room, the doors are locked, and Jesus appears. So, what's the springboard? The springboard is, is that what I'm using is uh, two things. One is, um, a, and I've used this before, and there's links, um, or there's, you can do a search on it, but uh, I use a, fo a, a piece of foam, like a foam paper, and I draw, um, I, I cut a door in it. Now, the only one I could find in the church today, in our Sunday school craft drawer was a foam butterfly. So I'm using that, but you could use, I mean, a butterfly, great symbol of new life that sometimes we feel like we're on one side of life and Jesus stands on the other, but then Jesus meets us. Jesus always comes to us. That's the beautiful part about that upper room story is that the doors are locked and Jesus still finds a way in. Jesus still finds a way when we are afraid, when we are scared, when we want to lock ourselves away. Jesus still finds a way in. It's a beautiful thing. So we could actually use the butterfly, the foam butterfly, or uh, a, a piece of uh, foam core, foam uh, craft paper. And you're going to cut a door in it. And the way I cut the door in it is I actually fold this in half, cut, and then after that's cut, I just We'll do one single cut down this way, and it gives you this door. And I have, what I've done in the past is I have drawn like um, sad, like droopy flowers on one side, oh, ooh, 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 on one side, and then on the other side I draw uh, vibrant colors, I draw rainbows, I draw all these kind of things that tell us about life, about new life. Um, and so, you got on one side, and what you do is you have the kids hold on to this door. They're on that side, and you're on that side as well, but you're, you're holding this, and they've got, they're holding the door, okay? And as they're holding the door, you are, the, they're holding the door like that. You're going to come in like this, and you basically, you're going to fold this in, and as you fold this in, it twists around everything twists around in through that hole see if i can get this as it twists through the hole that i do it yeah and then all of a sudden this door is facing they're holding it but they're on the other side of the butterfly they're on the other side of the door um we'll make this even a little bit more obvious i am writing Number one and number two. So you got the one, and they're holding they're holding the door like this, and then and it's easier to practice this. You just have some have someone hold the door, but as they're holding the door, you you reach your hands around like they're standing there. You reach the hands around like this, and you you are going to use your thumbs 
my thumb is on the top here and my thumb is on the bottom here. Your thumbs are going to push. You're basically twisting. So you're twisting inside. And as I'm doing this, I'm using this finger to hold it, but someone would be holding that. Twist it inside and you're going to feed these two sides inside the door. And you're going to keep twisting until this side here pops all the way through. And when it pops all the way through, you will find that they are holding the they are holding now the door that's on the other side. And it is it's an amazing, it's fun, it's it's basically they've all gone through the door, but actually it's more like Jesus coming to them. That they haven't moved at all, but they find themselves on the other side. So it, it is fat it is great. I love this one. Uh, Robert Neal is the magician and storyteller that came up with this idea of this trap door and about how you can get through. I love it. So there's that. That's that's the main springboard that that I'm looking at. Now, the other and I'm I'm using this I and I'm recording this a couple of days before it's Wednesday, right before Monday Thursday. My Easter illustration I'm using this, but I'm going to share this for your second Sunday in Easter because we're still in Easter. Jesus is showing up in amazing and strange ways. And then we are called then sent out to share Jesus. So what I have for my Easter Sunday is talking about that all we need is a little Jesus in our life. And I saw a reel on this. A uh, pastor was showing uh, what his daughter did for their youth group and they did it for the entire church and they got these little Jesuses. These little Jesus. And they put them all over their church. They put them in the pews. They put them on the window seals. I've got about 150, 160 of these little Jesus that will be placed in different places around the church. Someone walks in, they're going to see a little Jesus. And they, they can, I'm going to ask them to take a little Jesus and then take a second little Jesus because sometimes sharing a little Jesus is amazing. And sometimes sharing a little Jesus is what our neighbors need. And so then the question is, how do we share Jesus? And the, the Acts text, the first reading in the second Sunday after, second Sunday in Easter, is about sharing what we have, sharing what we've been given, sharing it with the community and with the neighbors at large. And so, and in that, in doing that, we share a little Jesus. We've heard the phrase that says, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. So we, as people of God, we are called to share little Jesus, a little Jesus with our neighbors, and, uh, and how we can talk about how we can do that. Now, um, I ordered these. I found these, on, I found these all on the internet. Found it on the internet. And I did a Google search for little Jesus figurines, and I ordered a bunch of these. If you don't have time to order them, what you can do is you can find little cutouts. You know, um, uh, what was it? I forget who put it out. Um, we used it. It was like the Flat Stanley, but it was the Flat Jesus, where Flat Jesus did a lot of traveled throughout the summer with different people, and they told stories in that. So taking one of those Flat Jesus and miniature, you know, putting it into a photocopier and making it into a small little Jesus. And you could put that in, like, if you use hymnals, you could put a little Jesus as a bookmark in the hymnal. You could put them inside your bulletins if you use bulletins. You can, all these little Jesuses, little Jesuses, sounds like Homer Simpson, um, or the Flanders is, 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 but it, the little Jesus that we can share. And then you have one that you can put somewhere where you can see it, and then you get a second one where you can share it with someone that might need it. So that is my springboards for the second Sunday in Easter. I'm hoping one of those two can help you in, your, in crafting your own children's sermon. Thank you so much for the love that you're sharing with your congregations and your kids. And they, if they forget to tell you, let me tell you, you are rocking it. And thank you for your partnership in this ministry and for being who you are. The world is better for it. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Peace.